All right. So today I'm gonna do the tier eight premiums as you guys wanted, because you guys wanted to see this one. All right. Um, I'm doing it live on Twitch, so if anyone has questions in chat, go ahead and ask. Or if anyone's watching on YouTube and you have questions, you can go ahead and uh, ask in the description. But my question for you guys in uh, Twitch and YouTube is, what's your first tier 8 premium? If you remember what it was, tell me what your first tier 8 premium was. Okay? If this I, I believe we're only going to do tier 8s this video, but if it doesn't take too long to do the tier 8s, we're going to actually do um, tier 7s too. But I think tier 8s should be enough. Alright, so... Let me set up a stopwatch. Here we go. And let's start. So we got... I'm not going to take too long on each one. It's going to be pretty short. And then I'll talk to you guys in the end, I guess. So first one we got here is Graf Zeppelin. Um, it's a carrier, of course, as we know. It has super fast planes, I think. It has AP dive bombers. It has torps. I think the torps are actually pretty decent. Last I remember. The rockets aren't too bad. Not crazy. They're not too bad. But yeah, it's a carrier. So it's kind of good, I would say. Next is Roma. Um, well, this one I've been playing recently, actually. This one's actually really fun. Really good tire traverse. 380mm gun, so not too crazy. But the shell travel time is really quick, so it's really easy to hit your shells. Um, pretty good armor, actually, on the deck. You can't show full broadside with it because you'll get smashed. But it's a very no lovely looking ship, Roma. Um, it's very interesting. It's relatively fast. It's not slow. It's pretty fast. But, you know, I don't know. I... I I wouldn't get that one, I guess, maybe. It's still it's still good if you want the Roma. Maybe you like Italian ships and stuff, but... I think its biggest downflow is its dispersion. I don't think people like its dispersion too much. For our third ship, we have Vanguard. This one's not really good. I wouldn't recommend anyone get this one. I've played this one quite extensively as well. I've had a good game recently, and it's over 200k. But I wouldn't, you know, get this one. Really and truly, its kind of gimmick is... Uh, is uh oh shit i can use the back arrow you guys are crazy i okay let me try and i'll try and but anyway i wouldn't get the vanguard this thing is horrible the broadside's horrible its main thing is its gun accuracy but it's not really that crazy i wouldn't get this one this one's not that good people are saying it's a sleeper i don't think it's that much of a sleeper okay next one is key it's literally an amagi with torps i mean you can literally just play amagi dude i don't think you want this one it's literally amagi with torps i'm pretty sure Maybe worse dispersion. I wouldn't get this one. This one's not good. Brandenburg. I, I wouldn't get this one either, bro. I think Tirpitz is better, dude. Tirpitz has higher caliber guns, bro. This, does, this one doesn't even have hydro. Tirpitz doesn't have hydro, but Tirpitz has higher, higher caliber guns. So I think this is like Palmer at tier 8. I wouldn't get it, bro. Tirpitz has torps too, you apes. <laughs> but anyway. Borodino. Okay, radar battleship. 12 kilometer. Russian raid. Okay. Um, it has 406 millimeter guns, I believe. Apparently, they're really accurate, too, apparently. I don't really play this one. I got it a while ago. Its biggest weakness, I would say, is its armor plating. It has Stalingrad-style armor plating, 25 millimeter upper nose and 50 millimeter icebreaker. So it does have a cool icebreaker, but the top of the nose is 25, so you do get penned. Okay, so this is one... I wouldn't recommend it for beginners either. It might be something you might find fun if you want, like, a radar battleship at tier 8. It would be fun for divisions and stuff. Oh no, I forgot to click the back button. Unlucky. Um, Constellation. This one has... I don't know, people seem to like this one. I don't really like this one. It has. It seems to have weak side armor, so you can get citadeled really easily. The nose armor is 27. You do have cool deck armor. It's like 50 something. Or it's it's pretty good, and the side armor is actually pretty good. But the actual like citadel plate is. I mean, you can pen it super easily, sadly. So I don't really like this ship. It's really fast. It looks like Vermont, but it's really fast. Um, radar 10 kilometer. Uh, whatever spotter plane, normal heal. I, I wouldn't get this one myself either. It does also get torps. I believe it gets three Fletcher torps per side. Um, Flander. I had played this one when it came out. I haven't played it since. It's pretty much a, a tier 8 Alsace. I mean, if you like Alsace, you might like this one. This one has higher t stock top speed. That's why you don't get a speed boost. You get higher stock top, top speed on this one. It's an interesting one, I guess. But again, it's not something I would really recommend you get over something else, for example. It could be fun, though, if you like French battleships, I guess. 
Next one is this one is a god one for sure. Tirpids, dude. This one was one of the first tier eight premiums ages ago. I remember apparently on EU server they used to have infinite tirpids and randoms back in the day because when it came out, like everyone wanted one. And I honestly, I recommend this one. This one's really fun. It can still be really fun if you put secondaries on it. Or if you want to play main guns, if you want. But I think secondaries can be really fun on this one. Especially if you get tier 6 matchmaking. But yeah, this one's a really good ship. It doesn't get the Hydro like Bismarck. But it gets Torps instead. So you can actually use those in a brawl. It's, it's pretty fun. This one's a fun one. This one, Gascon. Ugh. <sighs> I don't really like this one either. 380 millimeter guns. It has the repub turret layout as you can see. One turret on the front. Sorry, one turret on the front and one turret on the back. Um, you get speed boost, so you go relatively quickly, I guess. Um, you do get uh, apparently it's Massachusetts heal. Massachusetts heal apparently in terms of like as in its quick cooldown apparently. That's what I heard. So that's, that's, I guess, interesting, but I, I really want to get the gas going, man. It's not it, I think. Alabama. I mean. Well, why? I don't think you should get an Alabama. I don't think so, man. You can li I don't know. I just, you know, you can just either play North Carolina or if you already have a Massachusetts. Massachusetts is just better. Sadly, Massachusetts got removed because it was too strong. But, um... I wouldn't get an Alabama either, to be honest. Shkalov. Well. Uh, carrier players I know, my friends, who are carrier players, like Bison, he's a carrier player. Um, he thinks this carrier is really good. So, I mean, I trust, like, a carrier player's opinion saying a carrier is pretty good. So, Bison, the carrier player, thinks this one's good. So, I mean, if you like carriers, I think you'd like this one. So, it, this one's gimmick is you have three... Squadron types, I think it's dive bombers, like a circular dive bomber, skip bombers, and I believe torpedoes. That's what I think. And torpedoes. But yeah, this is Bison's opinion. He does like the Chikalov. So if you want a carrier that's pretty good at tier 8, it's good. It's not an entry level carrier, but it's pretty good. This one, Indomitable. I remember buying this one because in the background, as you can see over here, it's the capital city of my country, Valletta, here in the background. That's Valletta, and that's Fort Saint Angelo, I believe, right over there on the left. So that's the only reason I bought this carrier. But it's all right. It can be okay. It can be really good for turbo farming battleships. That's kind of its gimmick. Turbo farming battleships. That's the Indom Indomitable's gimmick. So, um, yeah, that's pretty much it, really. <laughs> Next is Irion. I don't really like talking about carriers, as you notice, guys, too much. So, Next is the Irion. This is the Tier 8 Pan-Asian uh, Premium cruiser that co tried to copy Kutuzov, but it was actually worse. So the gun reload is worse than Kutuzov. The gun range is worse than Kutuzov. It doesn't have smoke screen. Okay, Malta, you're saying everything's worse than Kutuzov. What's better? Well, you get Yu Yang torpedoes, I guess, uh, five aside, and you get TRB. So it's technically ten aside. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, you get better to, better concealment than Kutuzov, so that's pretty cool, I guess. But no, this has worse guns, like gun reload and gun range in Kutuzov, and it doesn't have smoke. So, this one's actually just worse. I wouldn't get this one myself. Um, Wichita. Well, I mean, just play Baltimore, no? You get better concealment on this one or something, but, but your radar is shorter range or something. I wouldn't get this one, I think, bro. I think just Baltimore is just better. Just get Baltimore, dude. Next. Rochester. Hmm. Okay, this one's a smoke cruiser. It's like Baltimore, but it's smoke version. This one's actually not bad. I've heard a lot of good things about this one. Because you get smoke, hydro, DFA, and damage control, of course. If you didn't get damage control, that'd be pretty special. I mean, if you like Baltimore and you want a smoke version instead of radar, I think this one could be fun for you. People seem to like it a lot and recommend me to play it all the time. So, you know, maybe you could find enjoyment in it. Congress. I think this one is turbo boring myself. It's literally an Alaska at tier 8 with nerf... Dis I think it's nerf dispersion or something. And like two less guns. And one less heal. and It's just a worse Alaska. 
at tier 8 though, so, you know. And against tier 6s, I assume this thing dominates. It's just I find these super heavy cruisers really boring. So, that's Congress. And nerfed reload, someone says as well. Yes, yeah, true, true, true. I don't know if I'll, about nerfed gun range, I'm not sure. Tone? Well, if you're a if you're a cruiser player and you love a toggle and you're also a carrier player, you know, this one might be good for you, man. It might be a good one for you. <laughs> might be a good one for you, you know. But I wouldn't recommend it myself. I think Atago is a better ship. And we'll talk about Atago later. This one gets torpedoes, of course, 10 kilometers, the standard. And it gets four turrets. Instead of five, uh, instead of Atago's five, this gets four turrets. It does get a heal, which is really nice for it. And it gets aircraft. So if you're not in range of anything and you want to use aircraft, you can use aircraft. So if that's kind of what you're interested in, it's a good premium, that's for sure. Tiger 59. This is the best ship in World of Warships history. I don't think you're going to ever find a ship as good as this one. Honestly, this is actually a, a, a sell. Because, I mean, this one's ridiculous. It has smoke, radar, super heal, damage control party, DFAA. I mean, it has Elbing gun dispersion, Minotaur guns. These are tier 10 guns on a tier 8 cruiser, guys. This ship is ridiculous. I don't know how to describe it. But at the same time, jokes aside, guys, I'm going to be serious for a second. I don't really think the Tiger is worth your investment. Honestly, Edinburgh is probably just better. Um, this one's not actually that good. <laughs> I'm joking. Um, I wouldn't get this one. I like playing it myself. I personally actually enjoy playing it. Um, I, maybe it's because it's a meme. or I actually enjoy playing it myself. So... I mean, if you if you want to ever see me play Tiger on my stream, just hop on my stream and ask me, hey, Malta, just play Tiger for me. I'll literally play it for you without points, without whatever. Just ask me to play it and I'll probably play it for you. Not six times a day, once a day maybe, maximum. But I'll play it because I actually enjoy playing. Um, Belfast 43. This one's not crazy bad. I think this one's not bad. The biggest downside you have over Edimbra here is you have no super heal, right? But you get HE. You get... Eh, the smokes are pretty garbage. They're, they're daring smokes, sadly. They're not good smokes here. On this cruiser, you don't want daring smokes. You want real smokes. And the, the surveillance radar is 9 kilometer, whatever. Hydro, okay, that's good. I think the biggest downside of the ship is... It's literally worse than the tier 7 Belfast. Tier 7 Belfast has better stats in everywhere. Except this has Torps over. I don't think this one's worth it, guys. I wouldn't get the Belfast 43. Unless you really want it, man. But I, I wouldn't get it myself. Bayard. This one's broken. Well, it used to be when it came out. So what do you get? Let's see. This one's really good. So you get a Reload Booster. French. Speed Boost. French. You get a Hydro. Standard. And a damage control. Standard. Um, you get decent firing range. I believe it's like 16. Yeah, 16.4 here. The reload's decent. The reload booster is really good, of course. Because this isn't like your normal Charles Martel style. This is a light cruiser. So the reload's already pretty good. It's like around 6 seconds, I think. So when you pop the reload booster, you have insane reload. You can reload like 5 times or something. Or, or maybe 4 times in a reload booster. So it's actually a really good ship. My personal average in this thing is 140,000. But I, you have to keep in mind, when I was playing it, it was old IFHE. Nowadays, it's not as good, because when you put IFHE, you're going to lose fire chance. But honestly, it's still pretty good. Like, there's people who still play it nowadays, and I know it's still really good. It also gets 9km torps, the standard French, 3 aside, I believe. So, And apparently, if you spec it into AA, if you put the FA on or whatever, it's good. So, it's a good ship. This is a really, really good ship. Definitely a recommendation, for sure, by Arden. Um, Kaga, well, I'm gonna have to use my bison intelligence here again, guys, because it's a carrier. He says it's really broken, so I'm gonna say, if you're a carrier player and you want a carrier, you should get Kaga because it's broken. Now, that's a bison recommendation, because I know his carrier opinions are the best, because he's a carrier player. But there you go. That's Kaga. It gets tour planes, four of them, you know, that drop at the same time. Uh, HE die bombers, which aren't crazy apparently, and rockets, which aren't that crazy, but the, the torpedo bombers are broken. 
Bison's gonna have a lot of fun when I'm <laughs> when he hears this, by the way. Ochakov. So I've played this one as well in ranked and randoms a bit. <coughs> it's uh it's okay. It's actually not as bad as I expected it to be. It has ten I think it has 10 kilometer radar, which is actually pretty good because it can stealth radar. And it has 152 millimeter guns that actually reload relatively quickly. It has really good concealment. Look, 9.1 detection. That's with full build. So you have 0.9 stealth radar. That's insane. Um, it's very squishy. I really wouldn't recommend this one. Because <laughs> it's really squishy. And it doesn't have a heal. But if you want something like this, stealth radar and stuff, maybe. It's going to be really hard to play, guys. So I don't really recommend you get it. It's not, it looks like Smolensk, but it actually isn't Smolensk, guys. Pyotr Bagration. This one I hate. Some people love it, man. I really don't understand the appeal for this junk, but... So, people like it because apparently the AP is really good. Um, it has a heal. It's relatively tanky or something. Hydro. When I play it, I get dev struck every time, so I, I can't really tell you from my personal experience that it's pretty tanky, but... People are finding it tanky for some reason, so there you go. Um, do I like this one? No. Would I recommend this one? No. There you go. Next is Mines. This one's broken overpowered. <laughs> this one's turbo overpowered. This one's insanely overpowered. So, why? So, it's a Mines, okay? It has German 150mm guns. We're talking about the same guns that the Nuremberg has, right? So, around 5... 5.5. If anyone ch in chat can confirm, I believe it's 5. No, it's 6. Okay, so it's 6. So that's really good, right? 6 seconds. You get a lot of gun range. I believe it's around 16 kilometer gun range. Or 16.4. It's a lot of gun range as well. And it's not fast. Sure, it's a German cruiser. But 17.5 kilometer gun range, people are telling me. Okay, there you go. <laughs> it's been a while since I played this one, sadly, but it's really good. The DPM is incredible. The torpedoes are incredible. This gets more torpedoes than Hipper. Hipper gets uh, uh, 6 per side. This one gets 8 per side. This one gets the same torps as Hindenburg, I believe. Um, and it's gorgeous. Yes, like everyone's talking about in chat. It's gorgeous. It's beautiful. It looks like I'm Hindenburg Jr. It literally looks like a Hindenburg Jr. Same camo and everything. I think this is probably the one of the best tier 8 premiums to buy. But you have to keep in mind, guys. I say that. It's not that easy to play. It's really good. But it's not that easy to, to play. And let me explain why. Unlike Hipper and Eugen, which get 27mm armor, which I will talk about when we talk about Prince Eugen. This one gets 25mm armor, all round almost. Which means you do get overmatched by 380mm guns. So, it's important. Your dodging ability needs to be somewhat stable. Because if you're not dodging well, you're going to get smashed <laughs> hard. And you actually get smashed really hard. Hydro, 6 kilometer standard German. Really good ship. This is an incredible ship. Definitely a recommendation. You just need to... F you need to know how to play cruisers. Kaiti cruisers with no heal. Because it's very squishy. It's very squishy. But definitely recommend on that one. And I'll, and I'll talk about my recommended ships at the end of as well. Saipan. I don't know, man. It's... Bison tells me it's not that good anymore. Look, I when I played it back in the day, 8.0 carriers, it was pretty good. Nowadays, apparently, it's not that good. <laughs> They're tier 10 planes, but the reserves are really small. So when you lose a plane, it hurts a lot, actually. This one's not actually that good of a carrier. Apparently, its main trait is its tier, old tier 10 torpedo bombers, which are actually higher alpha than midway dive uh, torpedo bombers, but... The issue is, apparently, when you lose a plane, you can't... Get them back quick enough, basically. So I, I wouldn't I wouldn't recommend this one as a carry. Kaga's way better, for example. Prince Eugen. Another German cruisers. Another German cruiser. They're actually tier 10 planes, you're right. But um the the alpha on the torpedoes are actually midway torpedoes. But old midway torpedoes, buffed midway torpedoes. So this is Prince Eugen, guys. Okay, what's the difference between this and mine, Smolta? Come on. They look similar-ish. Not really. The guns are different. Okay, so these are 203s instead of 150mm guns. Something I forgot to mention about mines, guys. And I really apologize. I hope you forgive me about this one. But mines gets improved HE penetration. Which means you don't have to take IFHE to pen battleships with it. Unlike every other light cruiser. Mines 
you don't put IFHE on it, because it pens everything straight away, out of the box. Which gets me onto Prince Eugen. This one has 203mm guns instead. Um, slower reloading, I believe, than Hipper, but it gets a heal, and that's actually pretty good. A Hipper with a heal. You can actually tank. It, it's actually pretty good at tanking, honestly. It's not that bad. Um, would I recommend this one? I mean, honestly, it's easier than mines to play for a beginner player. But for an experienced player, I don't think you want to get this one. I think mines is more, it's better. But if you're not that experienced, I think Prince Eugen's a bit better. But I wouldn't, I still wouldn't recommend the Prince Eugen because there's another cruiser and I'll show you really quick. It's called the Atago. It's a bit better than this one too. But this one's not a bad cruiser. If you're grinding towards Hindenburg and you want to use the exact same captain, it's really good for that. Atago. This one. This one's probably... Probably the best premium you can buy at tier 8, I think. Not in terms of overpoweredness, guys. Not in terms of high damage, like 200k's, 600k's. Or we're not talking about, like, you know, everything. This is, like, a good all-rounder cruiser. And it's really good. This has... I think it back before they buffed Zhao HP, this had the same HP as Zhao, by the way. Or more. But, um... So you, what, what do you get on this one? Well, you get five 203mm guns. Tone got four, remember. The reload is pretty slow, guys. It's like 16 seconds, 15 seconds. We're talking really slow reload. It's a super fast cruiser, kind of, for tier 8. 35.5 knots, that's without speed flag. 10 kilometer torps, and you get four sets. So you get, I believe it's eight aside. So you get 16 total torps. Insane concealment. It goes down to like 9.3, 9.7, somewhere around there. It's it's really good. You can sell Torp. It has decent gun range. It's good. This is a really good ship. Probably my number one recommendation for a premium ship at tier 8, man. This one's really good, man. This one's really good. Atago's wonderful. You got a heal. The armor, the nose armor isn't that crazy. The deck armor is incredible. I think it's 41 millimeters. So you can bounce deck, uh, shells on your deck. Remember... And um, you have to be angled. Because if you're full broadside, you will get dev struck in this thing. But if you're angled and you angle it well, it's really strong, guys. Fen Yang. This one's garbage. <laughs> Do not ever get this one, guys. This is ridiculous. This is horrible. This is garbage junk. So, let me tell you why. You t it looks like an Akizuki, right? It looks like one. But it's actually not. It has worse gun reload. It has not HE penetration on its gun, so you have to take IFHE if you want to pen destroyers, which is, ruins your fire chance. So I, I don't want to do that. Uh, TRB, I think these are Asashio Torps. I mean, this is the worst. This is the worst combination of a ship in one. It's just. I, I, why? Next. Don't get the Fenyang, bro, please. Silly Wangi. Ogni, this, this is an Ognivoy, but it's actually Pan Asian, and it has 5.5 kilometer hydro, like Lo Yang. And it has deep water torps. So they're stealthy torps. This one's actually pretty interesting. And it has Pan Asian smokes too, I believe. This one's actually a pretty interesting one. This one's a pretty interesting one. I had fun playing it originally. I don't really play it anymore. I don't really play these ships at tier 8. But this one can be an interesting one. If you really love Ognivoy, this one's an Ognivoy without a heal. And I think it has some, some worse stuff, but... Yeah. I don't, I don't know if this one's better than Lo Yang. I don't really know. This one has deep water torps, so the torpedoes, I guess, are better, but you can't hit destroyers with them. You do get the hydro gimmick, though. Orkin. Oh my god, guys, it's a tier 8 small on. No, please, it's not. Come on. It gets a normal speed boost, I believe. It gets a heal. And it gets a radar. No smoke. So in a carrier game, you get dumpstered. In a, in a carrier game, you get dumpstered. In a normal game, you get dumpstered. You have one torpedo rack. I don't like this one. There's some people who might find use in it, but I just don't like this one. I wouldn't recommend this one, sorry. Z35, this one's really good. Now, people are like, Bullshit. <laughs> Bullshit. You're lying. I'm like, wait, what do you mean I'm lying? Look. Malta, it has 6 kilometer torps. How can it be good? It's garbage. No, but wait. 
it gets good hydro. It's German hydro. One. Two. It gets short burst smoke screens, which means it gets better smokes than German smokes, which means it's already better than Z23. But, sure, the torps aren't in range, but I'm not a torpedo boat player, so I don't really don't care about torps most of the time. This is a gunboat. This is a purebred gunboat, and it's really good. Cause why? It's not like Russian gunboat where you can sit in the open, sure. But you have seven British smokes or so. It's really good for that. The thing with it is you have improved HE penetration on the shells, which means you pen battleships with this one. And you have British smoke so you can move around and choose where to go. And you have Hydro, just in case some 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 guy comes in. He's like, hey, Z C-35, I want to invade your smoke screen. I want to take you over. And you're like, no, I have Hydro, and I have British smoke. So I'm just going to gun him down, and that's what you're going to do, you know, unless he has Hydro, and then he's a Z-46, and then he kills you instantly. But apart from that, it's not important. It's a good one. It's a good one. This one's good. Some people might not like it. If you don't like torp boats, guys, sorry, if you if you do, if you like torp boats, do not get the C-35. It's not going to be your ship. If you like gunboats, it can be really good. That's pretty much it. Next. Cossack. Now, this one. This one, when it came out originally, I believe it came out in a system where you can buy it. You basically grind missions. It was the original dockyard. It wasn't in a dockyard setting. It was in the in the armory, basically. You do missions, it gets cheaper and cheaper, and, and you can buy the Cossack for $2. That was the original deal for the Cossack. And guess what you got with it? Probably, probably one of the best, if not the best, destroyers. One, one of the most, like, overall best destroyers at tier 8. It has... 5.5 kilometer concealment guys we're talking 5.5 kilometer concealment that's 0.1 difference from kagero like you outspot basically every other destroyer except for kagero and those japanese ones right um you've got pretty good guns honestly the arcs are bad but so are marceau's but the guns are really good on this one the the the, the, the torpedoes sure they're not crazy you get four of them they're not crazy whatever but she's really good this destroyer is extremely good for I wouldn't say newer players. I still think there's another destroyer that's better for newer players. But this one's pretty good, honestly. Hydro, 3 kilometers, standard British. Speed boost, pretty good. You also have improved acceleration because it's a British, British destroyer. So, honestly, the, you, the maneuverability on it is insane as well. And the smoke, British smoke, which is honestly wonderful on these types of destroyers. It's really good. This one is a recommendation for sure. Guaranteed recommendation. Next one. Oh, we're soon done, by the way. These are the last three. Oh, no. Okay. It'll be a 30-minute video, actually. Let Terrible. This one is pretty good. I love this one. Personally, I love this one. This one's god tier for me. I love it. It's a gunboat. I love my favorite ship in the game, guys. My favorite ship in the game is Kleber. So a ship like this. Wow. I We... You know, as, as 07, as a team, we played the Leterables. We did a three-man Leterable pack in Verizon. And we won the, the tournament using, like, a triple-man Leterable pack. It was really funny. But it was really fun to play. It's a really fun ship. It's incredibly fun. And it's really strong. But you have to be a good player to play it. You can't just be a new player and just go in and play. You have to be experienced and you have to have played French Destroyers before. But if you know how, it's incredibly strong. It's incredibly strong. It's incredibly fast. It's a um, good gun range. Decent reload. This one has better reload than Le Fantas, by the way. And the speed boost is a bit worse than Le Fanta, But the guns. This one, this one has better guns. One second reload, I believe, better. One second reload. So Lefanta might be a better overall ship in terms of torps and guns, but really and truly, French destroyers aren't meant for only torps, guys. These are gunboats, and this has a an entire one second better reload on its guns, guys, compared to Lefanta. So if you want a pure gunboat compared to Lefanta, this is much better. Next. This one. This one's really broken. For new players, this one's perfect. USS Kidden. This one's perfect. It's a Fletcher at tier 8, basically. With worse gun reload because it's tier 8, you know. It's pretty fast. It has a heal, American smoke, speed boost. This is pretty super easy to play. I mean, this is wonderful. I've played this one extensively. This was 
this for a beginner player, this one's wonderful. Heal. I mean, it has a heal. It's basically a Fletcher Hull with a tier 8 with a heal. You get one less Torprac than Benson, sure. But that's fine. You can take gunfights with destroyers. This is very wonderful. I have a kid video as well on my on my YouTube channel where I do basically a clutch with it. With with the kid. And it's it's really fun. So definitely a recommendation. Honestly, for new players, this is the one for destroyers. Definitely the one for for new players. Because of the heal. The heal helps you so much. The heal helps you so much. And then the last one. Low Yang. Don't listen to this. Take the Hydro, please. Don't take the Speed Boost, because there's no point to play Lo Yang if you're not going to play it with Hydro. Just play Benson, please. But Lo Yang is... Um, originally, it was really strong, because when it came out, it was like, Whoa, it's a Benson with Hydro? Nothing else has Hydro in the game? How is this real? How is this real life? <laughs> what? It's broken. But um, nowadays, it's still good. The Hydro range is actually really long range. But, I think USS Kid is just a better premium to buy, guys. I mean, this one's okay, but it, I think USS Kid is better. That's pretty much it, guys. So, for, for this one gets, sorry, four Benson turrets and two Benson Torprax. That's pretty much it. <laughs> and, and Hydro. It's a Benson with Hydro. That's it. So, that's pretty much the end, guys. I'm going to finish off by saying what ships I personally recommend, personally recommend for people to get. Well, let me tell you what I would get myself, and then I'll, re I'll recommend some for you guys. For myself, what I would get is... Uh, let's see. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Tiger. Bayard. Mines. Atago. Z35. Cossack. Le Terrible. Kid. That. That's what I would get for myself. And Tear Pits, just to have a battleship. Now, what do I actually recommend for you guys, for newer players? For newer players, it has to be Otago and Kid. And maybe Tirpitz. But Otago and Kid, I think those two, they get heals and they're pretty easy to use. When you get more experience, you can go into the Cossacks of the world. Um... You can go into the mines of the world. You can go into the Bayards of the world. Um, Eugen's good to start off with as well because it has a heal. Um, but Atago's better. Unless you want to train German captain points, sure. Eugen could be good. But um, Tirpitz is a good beginner one too because you can run it down all day long. <laughs> but yeah, that's pretty much it. Oh, and for a CV player, Bison will recommend Kaga. There you go. But I recommend the rest. There you go. So that's pretty much it guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. Again, like I said guys, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments or come on Twitch and ask me. I'm doing this live on Twitch, so where I'm I'm just going to answer some questions after after we talk, of course. But um like I said, leave in the comments guys, what's your first tier 8 premium ship you got back in the day or you're thinking of getting basically. And I'll try my best to answer as many comments as I can. Um next video we'll try to do tier 7 premiums because I promise so we did tier 8 premiums as promised. Now we'll do tier 7 premiums next time. Big fan, guys. Um, I will see you guys in the next video. Um, big fan.